So the next speaker is Heiner Kruth uh, from the Technische Universität uh, Kaiserslautern um, in Germany. And he is presenting a work titled Size uh, Simplification of the Procedure for Determining the Fire Resistance of Heat Insulating Brickwork. Dear colleagues, thanks for coming to my presentation. My name is Heiner Kruse and I come from the Technical University of Kaiserslautern in Germany, like the, say, like the chairman said before. I welcome you to my presentation with the title Simplification of the Procedure for Determining the Fire Resistance of Heat Insulting Brick Misery. Yeah, my supervisors are Professor Block and Professor Thiele. And yeah, this slide shows the agenda of the presentation. First, I will show the scientific, technical and economical importance of the topic. Afterwards, I will turn to the current state of the art and the evaluation and first results. At the end of the presentation, I will give, explain the further research procedures. Let's start with the scientific, technical and economic importance and some general information on Mensory. Brick Mensory is a very important building material for construction of residential buildings. Here are some brief facts. The number of households will increase by more than 500,000 from the year 2015 to the year 2030 and will be approximately 1.3% higher in the year 2030 than in 2015. 76% of all walls for the construction of new residential buildings were built of mandatory in 2015. This market leading use of masonry in residential construction has continued in the following years. The diagram shows the comparison of the building materials used in Germany for the construction of new apartments. As the diagram show, masonry has been the building material for years when it comes to the construction of residential buildings compared to wood, concrete and other building materials. You can see this here, the year 2015, 2016, 17, and 18. The reason for this are the advantages of mensury in comparison to other building materials. Average construction costs for masonry are 2 to 3.8% lower than for concrete and 4.7 to 6% lower than for timber constructions. External walls made of masonry in apartment buildings are approximately 11% less expensive compared to the use of reinforcement concrete and have a cost advantage of approximately 15% compared to timber constructions. Also, a study carried out at the Technical University of Darmstadt, which considered the three sustainability dimensions of ecology, economy and social culture over the entire life cycle of residential constructions that masonry has numerous sustainability relevant advantages. Let's take a look to the comparison of the masonry building materials used in Germany for the construction of new apartments. The diagram shows the masonry building materials used separated according to their stone types, as can be seen here. We have brick, calcareous sandstone, aggregated concrete and lightweight concrete. Also for the years 2015 to 2018. I would like now to move on to the next part, to the current state of the art. Here we take a look to the building physics and building requirements. In line with the high demand for brick products for masonry constructions, the brick and tile industry must react promptly with market oriented products like heat insulting brick masonry that meet the constantly increasing building physics requirements. For example, the thermal protection, acoustic insulation or fire protection. The improvement of only one physical property interacts in different ways with the other physical properties. For example, an improvement 
in thermal conductivity due to an increase in porosity caused by the raw material usually reduces the acoustic insulation of the permissible mechanical load bearing capacity. A proof of the physics physical building properties also includes the classification and fire resistant classes for fire protection. This leads me to my next point, which is the classification of the fire resistant duration. According to the current state of the art, these are large fire tests on storied high walls for product. These tests are usually very expensive and time consuming. The National Annex DEN 1996 contains a table of values for classification of the fire resistant duration of masonry walls. But these tables, excluding heat resulting brick masonry, because the tables are only for normal masonry mortar and or light masonry mortar and no thin lead mortar, which is used for the heat resulting brick masonry. Also, the cross density class from the heat insulting hollow bricks is lower than the application values of the table. To sum up, the aim of the research project is to establish values for quick classification of heat insulting brick masonry. These values are needed to replace the previously mentioned expensive and time consuming large scale fire tests. The picture shows show a large scale fire test according to AN 1364 part one with averaging costs of approximately 12,500 euro per test and with a period of time from planning to evaluation of at least half a year. On the table on the right side shows some values from the DEAN standard for the classification of the fire resistant duration of mandatory walls, what is mentioned before not for heat resulting brick masonry. Turning our attention now to the evaluation and first results to establish minimum fire resistant classes. The, step, the first step towards establishing these fire resistant classes for bricks was to gather information from previous test reports of fire tests with heat resulting brick masonry. An evaluation has shown that the following properties have the greatest influence on the test results from the fire test. These are the utilization factor, the brick thickness, the compressive strength class, the gross density, the whole cross section, and the timber at the thickness of the webs. The first four named are the current criteria used in the approvals to classify components into the fire resistant classes. Based on the evaluation, Test reports, the table shows a classification in fire resistant classes depending on relevant parameters for load bearing and room enclosing walls with one sided fire exposure. The main subdivision is the thickness of the wall and the degree of utilization in case of fire, alpha FI. But the table above shows some contradictions for the fire resistant class. For example, according to lines one and two, thickness greater or equal 365 millimeters. The maximum permissible resistant class REI 60, where the R means the load capacity, the E, the room enclosure, and the I, the thermal insulation, and the number is the time these criteria are achieved in fire tests. But for the thickness greater or equals 300 millimeters of person requirements for cross density class, compressive strengths and alpha FI, according to line three, even REE 90. This can be explained by the fact that when drawing up minimum fire resistant classes for thicknesses greater or equal 300 millimeters, only test results of walls with a thickness of less than 300 millimeters may be considered, since according to the regulation, the test results may be transferred to walls with greater thicknesses. If there occurs no test with a failure wall collapse of less than 90 minutes in this amount of data, then for thicknesses greater or equal 300 millimeters, REI 90 is specified as a fire resistant class. 
if thicknesses of greater or equal 365 millimeters are considered, it is possible that fire tests with a duration of less than 90 minutes may occur in this new data set. Therefore, the classification of these thicknesses is REA60. Also, the decrease in fire resistant duration with increasing thickness is not plausible and must be regarded critically due to the still relatively limited databases. Therefore, REI 90 should be changed to REI 60 in this case. This is here marked orange in the table. Nevertheless, it should be noted that alpha FI is more restricted at the thickness of the thicknesses greater or equal 300 millimeters than at a thickness of greater or equal 365 millimeters. However, it is questionable whether a reduction of alpha FE by 0.09 is sufficient to guarantee that the every wall with the properties according to line 3 complies with REI 90. In order to confirm this, an evaluation of a larger amount of data by test results or further test reports would be necessary. Let's take a look to the further research procedure and planned investigations. In the course of the research project investigations shall examine the difference between the thermal behavior of masonry made of heat resulting vertically performed bricks filled with and without resulting materials. Investigations from single stones up to large-scale fire tests shall show the determination of standardized product properties like the compressive strength class, the gross density or whole cross sections or thickness of the webs, and temperature depending compressive strengths. Yeah. With a thickness of 365 millimeters and two types of bricks, large chamber bricks and bricks with small holes. Investigations on small masonry walls, if they can replace major fire tests with special procedures. Yeah, also temperature depending compressive strengths and then with the fire test at different load levels with the unit temperature time curve ETK according to the standard 1363 part one and the experience and results gained in full table values for minimum fire resistant classes for heat insulting brick masonry should be then adjusted. Let's summarize briefly the usefulness of the research project and the results. The tests are carried out with the worst possible stone that the research results are transferable to many heat insulting brick masonry stones. Also, the values for classification of heat insulting brick masonry processes a lot of safety. And if the minimum values are not sufficient for brick manufacturer, he can still carry out the large scale fire test I mentioned before. But for smaller residential buildings, the determined fire resistant classes should be sufficient, which would be allow a quicker approval and save money for the large scale fire tests, according to EN 1364 part one, which I mentioned earlier before. Yeah, due to the short duration of the project so far and the corona pandemic um, which has come in between i unfortunately can not present more research results at the moment nevertheless thank you for your attention yeah in this slide you can see my literature sources which are used for the presentation and for further questions i'm available with that Thank you very much for your presentation. It's really interesting. And of course, we hope to see faster results uh, for the future uh, of your project. And now, uh, if you have uh, any question from the audience, um, we can discuss a bit. Uh, meanwhile, I have a couple of questions. So um, if we look back at slide 11 um, yeah. of the presentation, so you collected these kind of um, parameters which affect the uh, classific fire resistance classification of, uh, if I understand, of um, hollow clay bricks without any uh, heat insulation, right? No, these are um, from hollow bricks with um, yeah small um, 
we have with small holes filled and without also without insulting material and um, with the large chamber bricks these three bricks are here mixed together in this table and yeah when we are created this table we have also um, already made a division into the dis different types of bricks but the result there were not really um, realistic due to the yeah, small amount of data sets. Okay, because how many tests do you perform for this uh, classification? Yeah, we don't perform this test at our mm -hmm. laboratory. We uh, gather Collected. test reports from, yeah, we That's collect right. some and yeah, these are 60, 70. 60, 70 test reports, okay. Yes. I don't know if some, there are other questions. There's one from the Michael Chair. Maybe he can ask uh, in person if he wants to speak. Uh, I, I had a question that I, I can uh, ask myself. So uh, I, I wonder, it's not directly uh, related to, to the to, to the scientific and technical topic, but uh, I wonder whether the, there is a negative trend related to brick masonry due to the CO2 impact of, of this product. and. Uh, also, the possible increase of the CO2 cost, uh, as was mentioned in the keynote lecture this morning. And I wanted to know whether this uh, ra rather high possible cost, uh, uh, CO2 cost, is balanced by the thermal insulation advantage uh, in, the, in the buildings. Can you comment on this? Yeah, I think that when you produce a stone, you, uh, yeah, there's a lot of CO2. But like in the um, presentation in the morning for the future, we have to investigate some new yeah, arts to, to get less CO2 when we create a stone. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, there's another question in the Q&A form. So from Lakani Vitesh, uh, it was mentioned that the tests are planned with the worst brick type in slide 18. Uh, so what are the basis yes. parameters to uh, classify the bricks as worst. Every stone has a yeah, strength where the stone can hold the load and we gather information from previous tests and we want to do here more tests with different stones and then we want to um, yeah, to look which is the worst stone. So this is, would be a try and error and here yeah, with some information from these uh, test reports we already had. Okay, thank you. And we have also another question from Shakar Yedivia. So what is the meaning of this alpha phi parameter in this slide that we are looking at now? Alpha phi. Yeah, um, when we have a wall and we load this wall with a load level, then um, this is 100 percent and that would, when we put it into the fire um, in the case of fire in the oven then normally um, 0 0.7 means that this is nearly 100 percent in the cold um, exposure like this is um, that we reduce the, the load bearing with this factor for the case of fire I have a question related to this uh, to this table here. To me, it is not completely clear. But perhaps I didn't yeah. I didn't I didn't understand correctly. So um, you, you suggest, if I'm correct, to replace uh, the red values by the black values, or the, the the red values are the new ones. No, no. I want to replace the red values by the black, of course. Um, Which means that that at the end, all parameters have no influence on the required uh, uh, resistance class, right? Yeah, um, this is a yeah, table with the information from these test reports. And in every test report, there are a different stone, there are a different load bearing, there is a different alpha FI, and yeah, different strength classes. And in this case, we, um, yeah, we find out that it does not really have an influence here, but we know it has an influence. And so we uh, yeah, make this test program and then we want to show that there are different, um, yeah, different, um, different parameters which have an impact of the results. 
So you are at the beginning or at the end of your of your uh, dissertation? Of the beginning. This at is the beginning. Uh, when when, when did you start? Yeah. Just for curiosity. <laughs> we wanted to start at the beginning of the year, and then uh, due to the Corona pandemic, we yeah can only do this and not uh, test right now. So you are very yeah. very very oh, early yeah. stage of your of your of your uh, yes. PhD. And um, yes, yes. what is the scientific uh, challenge uh, in your in your uh, dissertation? Yeah, the challenge will be um, that every stone is different. No stone is like the other, and with, by heating vaulting brick mercury, the stones have really thin webs, and yeah, the 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 different part will be to yeah to to give information about these very variation of stones but only test with a few stones and yeah this will be the hard part here i think but to me perhaps i understand i didn't understand correctly um, every stone is different compared to the others but you want to investigate only the worst ones yeah that the other stones are on the safe side but from a phenomenological point of view if you want to understand what are the differences and what are the main parameters to assess correctly the fire resistance? Perhaps you, you need to investigate not only the worst ones, but also the best ones. Yeah, but um, first of all, we want to test on not only one stone. We, um, we, we have three different stones, like the stones with the, um, with the large chambers filled with insulation materials and then the stones um, with the small holes and they're filled and not filled. So there are three different types of stones we uh, investigate. And then yeah, when we test the worst stones, the, all the other stones are on the safe side. And um, like this table shows when some stones are tested, RIE uh, 60 is uh, it's okay for normal apartment buildings. Here in Germany, we have uh, some some norms where you can read which wall has or have to be um, which fire-resistant class, and normally RIE 60 is okay. And when a small manufacturer um, has to do these large-scale fire tests with yeah, this high amount of costs, um, they know they can have this world you see in this table, but they have to prove it. And when these tables we want to investigate get into the standards, then perhaps these small um, yeah, tire manufacturers don't have to do the tests anymore. And also yeah, can get quicker an approval that the stone can, yeah, can be used. But if, if I understood correctly, the worst ones for, for, uh, for um insulation in terms of insulation are perhaps the best ones for fire resistance and the opposite right no 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 the ah it's the opposite the heat yeah the heat insulation is yeah not really the same by all this heat insulting brick masonry stones but um yeah we look only to the fact of what uh, the load bearing that is the the most important fact here so the better ones course, for, for the insulation are also better in terms of fire resistance. You can't say this. So um, okay. So there is no difference. There is no, no no correlation between thermal insulation and fire resistance. No. Okay. And and and, and why? And and the in optimizing. I'm not a specialist in this in this in this field. I have to admit, sorry for that. Uh, but the the optimization is and, and the choice is done based on on, on which on which criterion. When an engineer no, when an has to choose the the the, the stone type, uh, he has uh, three criteria in fact, or, or more for uh, 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 thermal insulation, static resistance, fire resistance, and cost. Which is typically yeah, but, the, the governing one? I'm not sure if I understand the question right, but when we so, uh, um, choose, yeah, choose I, the stone. Perhaps I didn't formulate yeah. correctly my, my question. When a designer 
uh, wants to ch to choose the type of sp of, of, of stone. Um, there are several criteria. The first one is perhaps the the thermal insulation. Yeah. The second one is perhaps uh, statical resistance. The third one is perhaps uh, fire resistance, and one the last one, which is perhaps the most important one, is perhaps uh, cost. And typically, which one is which one of this part, which, of this criteria is dominating the the choice in practice? Do you know? When when we choose the stone for our tests or for the manufacturer? No, no, for the designer. For the designer? Oh yeah, okay. Um, interesting question. I think they the standards give some values which have been. Um, okay for the thermal insulation so this they have to be uh, this well used that the stone is okay and i think um when they want to yeah it's it's depending what where the stone um should be in which building when it is only for residential building there's rei 60 or perhaps um Pretty okay, but when there is an industry building with more fire uh, exposures, then perhaps we need um, we need RIE 90. So, yeah, there are different stones from the manufacturers, and they are yeah they are investigated for the the aim where they uh, get into the practice. A very general, a very, a very general question. You say that due to the Corona crisis, uh, you, you have been stopped in your research. Uh, how, how did you proceed at your university? Uh, you, you had to work at home, probably. I can imagine. And, yeah, uh, yeah. And and and, uh, and experimental work has been stopped. I can imagine. Yes. Yes. And how did you proceed with the contact with your colleagues and with your uh, PhD advisor? Yeah, we use a lot of um, platforms like Zoom or Skype yeah. to hold contact and to work with each other. Yeah, I can imagine as many colleagues in the in the audience. Yes. Yeah, we really all, all of really hope that uh, we can soon go back to the universities you you are again back to the university in kaiserslautern yes at this okay. moment i am back at the university all 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 all, uh, all researchers or only part, part, some of the the students are not at the university the next semester uh, will be also online yeah at yeah at the moment but yeah so workers are nearly completed back at the university. Okay, so depends. your all PhD students are back at the, at the university? Not all, it depends at which institute you work and how many people are there and... Oh, that's difficult to motivate them to go back in some cases. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Einar. And so good luck with your project and hope to see you in 2022 to see the final results of your um, PhD at the next PhD symposium in Rome. Thank you again. I hope so, but I can't um, say for sure that there is the project over. It's for two or three years. So I don't know if there are final results at Rome, but perhaps um, next results. Yeah, sure. Thank you again.